Now we're ready to talk about the pineal gland. And it's got an interesting name because if you see here up on the top of the screen, pineal gland, the first four letters spell pine. And it was actually named when the early uh, researchers thought it looked like a pine cone, a small pine cone. And we'll look at an actual structure here in just a second. But you got to remember that the pineal gland, its claim to fame is it synthesizes melatonin. And we're going to see patterns in a minute that during the dark part of the day, melatonin is elevated in the blood. Sometimes the pineal gland has been called the third eye because it is affected by how much light is uh, being exposed on the animal. So here's a section of a brain, and I'll enlarge it here and to show you the pineal. We know earlier we said it was <clears throat> in the midline of the brain. Here they've already got it marked red for me here. Uh, there's the spelling there again, pineal gland. Uh, if you haven't looked at a lot of brains, I'm going to point out the more forward part of the brain. Notice where my laser pointer is. That's forward here. And so the front of the, the face would be up here of this person. And this is rear here. And the pineal gland is always on the midline of the brain. Okay. So let's look at a little better picture of a pineal gland here. I believe this is a sheep pineal gland. And... This brain is actually orientated in just the opposite direction. So in this brain here, on the left part of the screen, this is forward. And then this is backward towards the back of the head. And here's our pineal gland pointing kind of backwards. And then this is an enlarged view, a large enlarged picture. And you can kind of see how it looks like a little pine cone there on that part of the brain. Now, melatonin levels in the blood are increased at night, and that's what this little uh, graph will show. Uh, to orientate you, melatonin here in picograms per milliliter of serum or plasma, they don't say, but it's that's the liquid that's usually analyzed. And the pineal gland begins producing melatonin when it gets dark. And here in this graph, that's when they're saying this happens. And then it peaks in the middle of the night. And then once the light comes on, the melatonin is degraded in the blood, like any molecule has a certain half-life. And then it drops down to very close to very low zero, perhaps. Here's another figure that shows melatonin levels. And it's a very interesting uh, depiction because this happens to be sheep. It's hard to find data on dogs and cats and well, horses would be easier. But this one has the same uh, designation here, plasma. So notice the last one, I said plasma or serum. This one does say plasma melatonin picograms per mil. That would be per mil of plasma. This bar down here, on the x-axis indicate indicates when it's dark okay and you can see when the darkness starts melatonin goes up and there's two groups here one is a low group and I'm going to explain that in just one second and then another another group that's called a high group and the point is that these are two uh, groups of sheep that have been selected for different levels of melatonin. They're all the same breed, but this low group never peaks out more than 200 at night, but this high group is close to five, 600 at night. Same breed, but you can genetically select for melatonin uh, levels. But the point here is, during the dark, melatonin is elevated. And one last thing about patterns, I thought this was interesting, as people age at least not sure about if it happens in animals but when people age the nighttime levels of melatonin become lower as you age 
So, uh, and it's, uh, there's not much difference between men and women, but let's look at this one. Young men, I'm going to draw or follow the pattern, and it goes up here and then drops down. Whereas elderly men, that pattern is here, and they have lower levels. And the same with women. Uh, and I've seen other data here. It almost is like a stepwise fashion where uh, some data said followed people that were 10 years old, then 20, then 30, then 40. And it was basically a stepwise decrease in peak melatonin levels during the night. Okay, I just want to show the pathway that's proposed of how light that impinges upon the eye influences that pineal gland, which is in the middle of the brain. For mammals, there is no light that gets through the skull. For other animals, reptiles perhaps, and birds, there is probably some light that gets through the skull and influences the pineal directly, but that's not the case with mammals. So here's the uh, thing to look at. I'm not going to name any of these paths, but the point is it's thought that light inhibits melatonin synthesis. So listen to that. So light inhibits melatonin synthesis. That's one theory at least. So during the day, the eyes see light and there's a pathway that's followed. And this is these are all neurons here. And finally, you end up at the pineal. And if there is light, it tends to put a break on melatonin synthesis. And then when the night occurs and light disappears then, then the pineal gland can produce melatonin. And when we look at a cell type in the pineal gland, and actually these are pineal sites, so on the left part of the screen is when it's dark, and I'll explain that, and on the right side is day, basically. So here it is. Melatonin uses tryptophan, which is an amino acid. So you could say tryptophan is a precursor for melatonin synthesis. And tryptophan is brought to these cells in the capillary. Remember, capillaries tend to be leaky. Material can get in and out of there. And so tryptophan goes through this pathway. I won't uh, name it all, but you might have heard of serotonin. That's a brain chemical. And finally, we get melatonin synthesis here. And you can see they've got four dots in this capillary. And this is what we've already discussed is an endocrine organ where a cell makes a hormone, it diffuses out into the blood supply and is carried to some distant organ. Okay, but at night, or sorry, at daytime over here, you still get tryptophan being exposed to the pineal site, but something happens in its synthesis, so you get less melatonin synthesized. So you can see here uh, in this right diagram, there's only one molecule of melatonin being produced during the day and four here at night. And that's just a relative estimate. So now let's do a little histology of the pineal gland. That means it's been taken out and stained and processed and cut into very thin tissue slices. And then you look at the material, in this case, under the light microscope. And I just want to show this is a very enlarged view, of course. But pineal sites, I didn't spell that out before. If you want to write that down in your notes, there's the spelling, pineal sites. Sites always mean cells. So these are cells in the pineal gland. And then there's this thing called brain sand. And this is interesting, in humans at least. As humans age, the pineal gland tends to become more calcified. And it shows up histologically as these little dots or blobs. Uh, other cells are called interstitial cells. And then, of course, there's blood vessels that have to carry material to the pineal gland and then carry melatonin away. So let's look at a little closer view of the brain sand, or sometimes called pineal sand. And this is a high power view versus the last slide. So this is very close up, probably maybe 800 to 1,000 magnification. And you can see these areas of calcification. And this text refers to 
that at the sand or calcified material is an excellent radiological marker. So therefore, in an older brain, if you do a radiograph or an x-ray, you might want to call it, then you should be able to point out the pineal gland versus other tissue, other brain tissue that wouldn't show up as well. So here's a human brain that has a calcified pineal gland. And right in the middle, get my pointer going here, I always said the pineal gland is on the midline of the brain. It's called the mid-sagittal line, medial line. And I'm going to encircle the pineal gland. There it is. So this is an older individual. Actually, the amount of calcium almost looks the same as in the skull here on either side of the slide. So now my picture here is, I have no, I, no care about the uh, brand name, but I wanted to point out that sometimes people will buy melatonin. You can find it in drug stores and probably grocery stores, and it's supposed to be a sleep aid as they're advertising here. Remember, melatonin is higher at night, and one of the theories, in humans at least, it helps with the wake sleep cycle, also thought to be involved with jet lag, and with some animals, and in fact, since horses are one of our companion animals we deal with, melatonin is thought to help control seasonal breeding. When we get to reproduction, we'll be talking about how horses are what's called long day breeders. As they feel the days getting longer and the nights getting shorter then, they tend to start their reproductive cycles. And just as a contrast, it's interesting, sheep are short day breeders. They tend to start their ester cycles because they are seasonal. That means sometimes they're not having ester cycles. But when they do start their ester cycles, they get stimulated by longer nights, short days. So they're called a short day breeder. And in fact, in sheep, you can feed melatonin because it is orally active and actually fool the sheep to think the nights are getting longer and all you're doing is feeding melatonin, but inside the animal, it doesn't know what actually is going on. Let's end there for this lesson.